Everybody? Good. Hey, hey. I like that. I don't know if any of you were listening uh, closely or not earlier, but I was not saying that the Lord is returning this morning. Um, if you notice that in communion, I, I was just talking about this morning. I was not uh, predicting that the Lord is returning. Some of you were getting ready. That's why you're excited about the Word, right? You just heard me say the Lord is coming. Uh, no, I don't make those uh, predictions. Um, just to, to I don't I kind of I stepped out at the moment. My dad was talking about uh, family table next week, not today. Normally it would be today, the first uh, Sunday of the month. Next week uh, we're going to be at Cornerstone Ranch. It's at five o'clock. You can show up early um, if you want, um, and and you just tell them with your with Life Community Church at the front. We've got this. We did it last year too. There's this little uh, cabin that they have there that we met in, and they've got tables and chairs and. And we're going to eat. It's a really good time um, for all ages because it's, you know, there's people who are there who are just um, socializing, not rolling around in corn barrels or whatever they do. I I won't be doing that. So uh, if you just want to chat, uh, people will be there to just uh, chat as well. So uh, it is a really good time. I would, I I ask that you would please uh, join us in the sign up. He may have mentioned the sign up out there. There's some things we'd like for people to bring specifically uh, so we know what all is being um, brought. My recommendation, you can come early, early. Um, I think as early as two or three is what Amber said. If you want actual details, talk to her. Um, I I may be butchering them. Um, But if you want to come early, you have food, I would say like 4.30-ish because I think we could get into the cabin at that point and put you know, whatever it is you have um, in there. So, good? Good. Great. This morning, before we uh, begin, I just want to share a word of encouragement, brothers and sisters. You are loved by God. He sees you. He knows you. He's near you. Walk this morning in the freedom of being His child. He knows that you may not have it all together. He knows where you're lacking or where you're insufficient. He, he knows what you're walking through right now, how dark or discouraging it may seem. And so no matter how near or far you feel from him today, his message to you is this, I love you. I love you, and you're my child. You don't have anything to fear. You don't have anything to fret. Be encouraged brothers and sisters, this morning. Over the last three weeks, uh, we've been looking at God's invitation or command, really, to receive, even pursue, joy. That it is God's desire that you and I are fully satisfied in Him, and the truth is actually that He's the only way that we're ever fully satisfied and full of joy. doesn't matter what other means that we've achieved satisfaction or fullness or joy throughout our lives, uh, that none of those things are lasting. Only He is the full satisfaction. Only He is full joy. If you want to catch those, I would recommend go back and listen to them. There's about uh, two or three weeks. I can't even remember how many of them there are now. But one of the keys we established last week is that receiving his joy is found in living for his purposes, doing the will of the Father, obeying the commands of Christ. This is the way to fullness. This is the way to satisfaction. But in order for us to ever commit to doing this, it requires something of us. In order for us to ever commit to doing this, it requires something of us. Because we won't fully obey the commands of Scripture or wholeheartedly submit to following the will of the Lord without it. This particular thing. I'm trying to get you on the edge of your seat. What is this thing that is going to be necessary? If we're going to obey, if we're going to do the will of the Father, if we're going to walk in the ways of Jesus that leads to full satisfaction, full delight in the Lord, fullness of joy, which ultimately glorifies the Father and receive the peace that's beyond man's understanding and man's comprehension, there's one key that's necessary for us to walk in this kind of obedience. If 
for us to follow the will of the Lord. This word is trust. Trust. Romans 15, 13. If you have your Bibles with you, open to Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here is that key word. It says, as you trust in Him. May God fill us with joy and peace. How? How? As we trust in Him. To experience joy, to find satisfaction, to find peace, we have to trust God. We have to believe in Him to the degree that when His Word says it, we trust it. If His Word says it, we believe it. We trust it which is indicated by our response. Our trust is indicated by our response to what we read or say we believe. Dallas Willard says we don't believe something by merely saying we believe it or even when we believe that we believe it. We believe something when we act as if it were true. It doesn't matter what we say or what we think. Our action indicates what our belief is actually is. It indicates that our belief is actually present. When I act on something that I believe, I've demonstrated trust. I've demonstrated trust when I act on something that I believe. So it doesn't matter what I think, it doesn't matter what I say, the indication, the evidence is my doing. It's the evidence of my belief, which is trust. And to some degree or another, everyone in this room who's a follower of Jesus, we all trust God in areas of our lives. Some of us more than others. Some of us in different areas of our lives. But a good question that we should ask ourselves is how often is our trust based on current circumstances? It's easy to trust God as my provider when I have a job, right? But what about when I don't? It's easy to trust God when everyone in my family is healthy, but what about when there's a terminal illness or an unexpected death that happens? It's easy to trust God when my kids, or even adult kids, are serving the Lord, but what about when they reject Him? Do I trust that there's this good father who's seeking after the lost? Do I trust? And within the context of our last three weeks of messages on joy, here's, here's what I want to, us to really hear. Do we trust that living according to God's word actually leads to our satisfaction, to the fullness of joy? Do we actually trust that living in full obedience to the Word of God, living into the will of God, is the satisfaction of every longing that we have? Do we trust that? When we read it in here and we discover the will of the Lord is this, obedience looks like this, do we trust it enough to forgo whatever else it is that we believed or whatever else it was that we pursued or whatever else we thought led to satisfaction and we said, we trust this way. I'm willing to deny any other way because this is the way that he's laid out before me. Do we trust it? I'm not talking about what we say or think we trust, but do the actions of our lives indicate that we trust? 
When I read this, when I read what we read last week, when, he, when I read this, he makes known to me the path to life. In his presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Do my actions indicate that I believe that truth? Do I trust him that that's the truth? When the Word of God says this is the way and I don't follow the way, do I trust him? It's quiet in here. When we don't trust, here's what we do. We rely on our own wisdom. We rely on our own understanding. And in our particular moment in history, we were talking about this, a group of guys, uh, which I'm going to just throw a plug in here. A group of us, uh, this next week, we're, I'm, I'm doing this again. We're going to, the 330 building is going to be open from about 9 to 4 on Tuesday and Thursday. And specifically on Thursday afternoon, about 1 o'clock, some guys have just been gathering down there. We've just been chatting, talking about things, growing in the ways of the Lord, encouraging one another. So if you're a guy and you're free Thursday at 1 o'clock, Come by the 330 building. I will brew you a nice cup of coffee. We have some little snacks. Uh, please, small plug. Stop by. I'm there. Some guys will be there. Um, even if they're not, I'll be there. Moving along. So when the Word of God says, uh, sorry, when we don't trust, we rely on our own wisdom or understanding. And in our particular moment in history, this may be one of the most simple yet difficult things we can do is just to simply trust. Why do I say that? Over the past five to ten years, culturally speaking, we've witnessed trust reach a troubling low. As a society, as a people, we're more skeptical, we're more cynical, we doubt what we previously trusted. I'm sure most of us in this room have witnessed this, have we not? Has anyone else felt this, read about this, experienced this firsthand? I'm sure we've noticed that public trust in media, doctors, science, politicians, school systems even, church leaders, and any number of organizations or institutions, the trust in these previously somewhat trusted, trusted no matter what degree we trusted them before, the reality is we trust them less. Trust has eroded over time. I've heard it from believers. I've heard it from unbelievers. I've even felt the pressure of it sometimes. My own trust uh, beginning to, to waver based on it, uh, information I'm hearing here or news I'm hearing here or conversations I'm having over here or circumstances going on around my world. Distrust seems to be at an all-time high, does it not? If you go do a Google search, I started to provide some stats, and I thought, well, we just, we, this might just get too nerdy to do this. But if you want to go do a Google search on just, just go, go Google public trust st statistics. Go research that, and you'll find uh, Pew's going to write about it. Uh, you're going to find everybody writing about this particular topic, the research that's been done and the question, the distrust that is being exhibited amongst, especially because of our context in America and Americans. There's plenty of information out there if you want to go look into that. And you may be thinking this morning, well, that, has, that doesn't have any impact on our trust in God. And maybe for some people that it doesn't. Or maybe for some people it's just gone unnoticed. You see, when we no longer trust the sources that we previously once believed, what do we begin to turn to? We begin to look into our own understanding, our own assessment of things, our own experiences, our own feelings, our own evidence that we can come up with. We begin to do the work ourselves. We begin to look at what we can see. We then only begin to trust what we can see, touch, make sense of, or know with certainty based on physical experience. I can only trust what I can see, touch, or what is, uh, I've felt or experienced. Or we trust based on how we feel 
about particular circumstances? Have you not heard that? To look inside, how do you feel about this particular thing? We begin to trust our own feelings. We begin to trust the, the evidence, the, the, the things that are around us, the circumstances, the situations, what's going on. Do you see a problem with a trust that is built on only what we can see or how we feel? Does anyone else see a problem with that? Trust is built on what we believe to be true. When I become the source of determining what is true based on my experience or feeling, I'm doing something that Scripture says not to do. Because I don't know if you realize this or not, but even, at least in my own life, my feelings lie to me. They're not a great source of truth. They don't really tell me what's going on more often than not. The same with circumstances. The things with, same with things that I observe with my eyes or I've observed with my experience. It's not always true. The story that I'm, I'm interpreting, what I'm telling myself based on these particular circumstances is not always true, is it not? So this gets me to this morning's text. I'm doing something that Scripture says not to do when I begin to trust these things. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. This is where we'll be for this morning. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. This is the word of the Lord. Let's go to Him in prayer for just a moment. Father God, open our hearts and open our minds. We desire to be transformed by the power of Your Word. We want to see Your Spirit move. We want to see Your Spirit move in our lives. We want to see Your Spirit move in our church. We want to see Your Spirit move throughout our community, and let it begin with us. Let it begin with us with me. Stir up my heart, Father. I pray this morning that your word uh, be illuminated through the power of your spirit. Bring understanding, bring revelation to us this morning. Challenge us, encourage us, Lord. We want to trust you more, Lord. And I pray that these words over the next few moments, that they be born of your spirit and not of my flesh, that they edify your church, that they build up the body of Christ. All for your glory. All in an act of worship unto you, Father. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. We know this passage well, do we not? I would imagine many in the people have heard this or memorized it, but sometimes a passage can become so familiar to us we haven't stopped to really consider what is it actually saying or am I actually living it? And so I want to begin by breaking down uh, some of the passage to illuminate some specific terms. First, it's this, trust in the Lord. This word, trust, for us, we typically interpret this just to mean to rely on or to have confidence, but the Hebrew word here has just a little bit more weight behind it. Think of it as this. Think of it resting on a hard surface or putting your full weight on something. The image that I have in mind is this, is if, if I were to, to lean all of my weight up against that wall over there, have you ever, have you ever like lean, but then also had this concern, like, well, what if this thing gives way? Like, all of my weight, I'm, all my eggs are in this basket, and this thing moves, it, it's just, I'm going to splatter on, on the ground. That's how I think of it, as I think of just putting all of my weight on something, and I have nothing else holding me up but whatever this is. This is that kind of trust. Think of like a, a hammock that you lay in. What do you do? 
You put all your trust in the structural integrity of the netting or the fabric or the poles or the ropes or whatever it is. You've put all of your trust. Does anybody have a story of falling out of a hammock? Maybe. I'm sure there's someone in the room. But you've placed trust in the hammock, all of your weight. This is more similar to this word that's being used here. So trust in the Lord would be like resting your whole weight upon him or to depend upon him completely and not just half-heartedly. What does it say? With all of your heart, with all that you have, with all that you are to trust him with your entire being, with everything that you are. And so to trust Him with all your heart and to lean not to your own understanding. And the word lean looks more like partial support. Think of someone uh, using a cane. I'm thinking of my mother this morning. The cane, uh, she doesn't place all of her weight on it, but it, it keeps her steady. There's an unsteadiness to her, and so she's putting uh, some weight that she's putting on this. And so to lean not in your own understanding, I believe, might be the hardest discipline of your lives, especially if you're wired like me. I am uh, very analytical. I, uh, I've been accused of overthinking. I don't reciprocate that by telling someone that they're underthinking, but I guess I could. But I am what you would categorize as an overthinker, over analyzer. I'm looking at all of the details. And so to lean not to my own understanding is quite the task. Maybe that's easier for some than others. It's difficult for me. So our understanding is this. It's the ability that we have to break down information and analyze things to make a decision or solve a problem. That's like breath to my lungs. The ability to look around you at circumstances and figure out what you need to do or to make sense of what's happening. You're taking in all of this data. You're taking in all of this information and you're analyzing. You're making sense of all that's going on. This is your understanding. But God is saying don't depend don't lean on that understanding. Don't rely on your ability to see, assess, and act on every situation and circumstance of your life. Because the circumstances of your life might be telling you that everything is crumbling down around you. But the Lord is telling you, you are being taken care of. You are firmly in my grass. The circumstances in life might be telling you that you're not successful, but the Lord is telling you, you are my child, and your faithfulness is storing up true riches, true treasure. The circumstances in life might be telling you that you're all alone or that no one loves you, but God says, you are are my beloved, and I am always near you. I am always with you. You see how our circumstances can, can betray us. Our situation can deceive us. What's going on in our lives can be speaking lies to us. And so hear the word of the Lord today. Don't lean on your ability to make sense of what's happening to you in this life. Trust the word and its divine author and its certain ending that's already been written. Trust the Lord. We can trust all of our weight into the everlasting arms of the Father. If it's in his word, we can trust it. If it's in his word, we can obey it. It's the path to life. It is the path to fullness. It is the path to glorifying the Father. 
to trusting Him fully, to trusting His Word. If His Word says it, I can trust it, despite whatever's going on around me, despite what anything else may look like. And when we trust Him with our whole heart and acknowledge Him in all our ways, which means this, in all of our ways to know Him. But this isn't like you know Michael Jordan. This isn't like you know uh, statistics and you know a lot of information and you know um, I would claim that Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. Not like you would know this kind of information. But more like you would know a spouse or a very close friend, an intimate kind of knowing, the kind of knowing that maybe you could finish one another's sentences, that you know what one another are thinking. This is the kind of knowing that it's speaking of. So to trust Him and to know Him in all areas of our life, it says that He'll do what? He will make our paths straight. Think about that for just a moment. I want you to picture yourself driving. All the bumps, the potholes, the obstacles in the road. Some of you are thinking I just described I-35 or many local roads. Bumps, potholes, obstacles in the road. Even moments where the the road splits in four different ways without any signs. Or if you're driving through 8 Oklahoma and there's many of these streets you drive and all of a sudden they just end and there's a college. Or you just, you're driving along and and wait a minute, this street stops and picks up three different times uh, across, trying to get all the way across. How do I even get, how do I even get through this way? We have such a great example right here in our own community. So picture you're driving. There's the bumps, the potholes, the obstacles in the road. The the road has many different directions to go. This looks very much like the way of life, does it not? Has your experience looked like this in walking through the steps of your life? Things just don't make sense. This obstacle in the way, I don't even know how I'm going to, to navigate around this thing. There's no way over it. There's there's no way actually around it. But in my understanding, I'm trying to make sense of this thing. I'm trying to figure out how I get around it. I'm trying to figure out why it's in the way. What's its purpose? We're trying to make sense of, of, of things, trying to make sense, trying to figure out ways around whatever's in our way or ways to move the obstacles that are in front of us. Because the way in front of us does not make any sense, and it doesn't even look like there's a way to get through. But what does God say? I think this is one of the hardest things I have to, to wrestle, that God's going to make the path straight. But what does he say? He says, trust me fully, know me deeply, and I will make your way straight. I will make your way straight. That's not a guarantee that the way will look straight even in our natural eyes, that it makes sense to us in the natural, but it does absolutely guarantee that the way will be made straight. This is a promise from the Father. If I'm going to trust this particular Scripture, I talked about trust, but I'm also talking about trusting in Scripture. So if I'm going to trust what Scripture says, and He says that if I'll trust Him, and I will know Him, and I will not lean into my own understanding of what makes sense to me, that He will make my path straight. Do I trust it or do I not? Some of you right now are thinking, there's no way. If you're like me, maybe a little bit skeptical. A lot of times I tell people my spiritual gift is cynicism. It's not. But you're thinking there's no way that God can make this path straight in front of me. There's no way. And if that's you, if you're thinking of that or you're thinking, no, I don't, I don't think that God actually does that, then you are in the exact 
place that God wanted you this morning. You are hearing the word of the Lord this morning. He's trying to tell you, lay down this level of distrust you have, this level of skepticism that you have. Lay down what makes sense to you in your eyes, in your life, based on what's going on. Don't, don't, don't lean into that. That can't be trusted. But what? Trust the Lord and know Him in all your ways. And He's going to make your path straight. What I think is beautiful about this, he's saying, he's saying don't make sense, you know, don't lean into your own understanding, don't try to make sense of it. And while at the same time I'm listening to this passage, I'm reading this passage right now, and I'm trying to make sense of it, well, how's that going to work out, God? How are you going to, how's that actually going to happen? None of this stuff makes sense to me. I can't make sense of it. What am I doing? Exactly what he's telling me not to do, trying to lean into my own understanding. You are where God wants you to be right now hearing this message. Receive it. Say that. If that's you and you were, you're questioning it, you're doubting it, say, God, I receive this word. I receive this message right now. So this doesn't mean that the path will be quick and easy. I'm, I'm not that old, but I know some, some older folks in here could, could let you in on their story, and it wasn't quick, and it wasn't easy, and maybe there's still road bumps ahead. There's still things that don't make sense that are out in front of us today. It doesn't mean that it's going to be quick and easy, and it doesn't even mean that we'll receive the roadmap. This is what your life's going to look like. Now you can, just, you can at least just see it as you wait on the journey. I don't have one of those. I don't know about you. If you've got one of those, please share with me how you received it. So it doesn't mean we've received the roadmap. It doesn't mean it's quick and easy. It means that we trust the navigation. I was going to use a story. Of, if, I don't know if you've read of any of those stories about people, these kind of wild stories where people just blindly trusted their GPS. There's one back in late May. There's a lady who was visiting Hawaii who drove off into uh, the ocean because she just trusted the GPS, and it led her right into the water. And she, this was the second time in like three months that this had happened at this exact same spot where GPS had led people into the water. I think this is the kind of blind trust that God's talking about. Maybe not leading to destruction, maybe not leading to those kind of moments like that, but this kind of trust that just wherever, wherever you're leading, wherever you go, whatever your word says, I'll follow it. I'll do it. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It, I'll turn into the ocean. It doesn't make sense, but I'll do it. I'll deny myself to, to do this, to obey this. I'll give this up to obey this, to do this. I'll, I'll make free time to do this for this person, to do this for your kingdom, to do this for your will, to do this for your cause. I will, I will do it because your word says to do it, and I trust it, even when it doesn't make sense at this particular time, at this particular moment. How often, here's a perfect example, how often are you in your life thinking, you know, I, you, you hear the message, I need, to be, I need to be, I spend more time in prayer, but you're like, I really don't have the time for prayer. I've got too much going on, and what am I doing? I'm leaning into my understanding of my situation and the things that are going around me, and as I say, I cannot make time to spend time with the Lord. There's my own understanding. There's my own intellect. There's my own wisdom, but the wisdom of the Lord says, nope, you're actually going to be better off stopping and spending time with me, sitting with me, listening to my voice, reading my words, offering up praise. But I don't have the time. I've got all these other things going on. Don't lean into your own understanding. Trust what he says. Abide in me. Remain with me. This means to trust even when things don't make sense. They don't add up. And that's scary. It makes us vulnerable. It seems risky. 
And I say that's why we have to know him. Know him. To acknowledge him. To know him closely. To know him deeply is to trust him. Our trust will grow as we know him. It makes me think of these words in Matthew 18. It says that unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You often hear about the faith of a child, right? Childlike faith. And for those of us who have children or have been around children, children have a certain level of, of trust about them, don't they? They just, they just trust people. A blind kind of faith in it. I think that God gave me this moment yesterday morning as I was sitting outside. Yesterday morning I was, I was sitting there, I was listening to a podcast and I was drinking a cup of coffee, as you will find me uh, doing quite often. And enjoying the slightly cooler temps. If you got out yesterday morning or any of these mornings, it, it feels really nice outside. And so outside in the front yard, my, my sons had rigged up a giant um, cardboard box that was kind of leaning on some other um, toys. And they were climbing up on it, sliding. I, mean, I don't know how long they did this. It was forever. Climbing up on it, sliding down, kind of wrestling a little bit, jumping on and off of it here or there. And, and so my concerns... When I looked at it, when I observed what was going on, when I assessed the situation, it was this. It didn't look very, very stable. And for those of you who know me, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm, I'm a little overly that way. If you put a cup a little close to the edge of the uh, table, it's going to concern me to the degree I'm going to move your cup a little closer in because somebody's going to knock that cup um, over. So I, I look at it and I say, this, is, this, isn't, this doesn't look stable. I didn't say anything to him. I just let him, you know, I guess I was just going to let him get hurt. Um, it didn't look stable. The structural integrity of the cardboard was, was sure to give, right? I mean, they're climbing on it, they're, they're, they're wrestling on it. Someone was going to slip off at any moment. So these were my concerns. This was my observation. But my sons, just full trust. Just full trust. Both of their full weight on top of the box, jumping, sliding, not a fear, not a concern, just trust. All their weight, trust. All of their weight, all of their faith on top of this flimsy box and on, leaning on top of a toy. And on top of that, it wasn't just this full trust, but what did this full trust, no concern for any of them, what did it lead to? Pure joy happiness, gladness. These guys were fully satisfied when their full trust, no fear, no concern. They weren't worried about the circumstances. They weren't worried about what things looked around, or like around them, that they might even be dangerous. They just trusted and they were full of joy. I think that's the image God gave me yesterday for this particular moment. Because when I described trust earlier, you know, this idea of putting your full weight on something, and I picture my sons putting their full weight on this flimsy cardboard box. But then what attached to it? I think this is just beautiful. I don't know if, if you've got this, but this, this full joy found in being able to trust in this way. Not concerned with their own understanding. That they, didn't, they don't have that yet. Lucky them. <laughs> Lucky them to not be worried about this cardboard box is going to break. Lucky them to not worry about, well, what's going to happen next week? Or how am I going to make ends meet? Or how am I going to do this? Or how is this going to work out? Or how am I going to get around this obstacle or this speed bump or whatever's going on in my life? I'm not worried about that because I fully trust in my Lord. What is the end result of that? Full joy full peace. The circumstances don't matter because my trust is in the Lord. My trust is in what His Word says, who He says I am. Full trust. That's the image God gave me yesterday. He told me, He said this to me, I believe. 
not in direct words that I audibly heard, but I felt, trust me like that, Michael. Trust me like that. Trust my ways, my character, my nature. It can be fully trusted. I am the way to life and fullness of life. I am the way to satisfaction. I am the way to fullness of joy. Therefore, do as I say. Follow my ways. That means you, you can love your neighbor as yourself. That means you can love your enemies. That means you can lay down your life for your wife. That means you can submit yourself to your husband. That means you can obey your parents, kids. That means you can forgive others again and again and again. That means you can give up sin. That means you can stand up for truth in the world, on your job, in your family, even when it doesn't seem like it would be favorable, even when the circumstances don't look like they're lined up for that. You can be hated for Christ's sake. You can be generous with your time and your resources. Why? Because he can be trusted. He can be trusted. Obeying his word, it can be trusted. We can believe him at his every word and trust him fully. Whatever your circumstances look like today, whatever the situation is, don't lean on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart and know Him deeply. Don't trust the circumstances. Don't trust the feelings. Trust the truth. Trust the truth. Whatever things look like going on around you in your world, whatever is happening, whatever is occurring, whatever you're feeling inside, Trust this. This is the only thing that's definitely not lying to you. Trust the truth. So my question is, if you would bow your heads this morning, will you trust God fully today? With your whole heart, with your whole self, will you take your full weight and climb up on top of that flimsy cardboard box without any care or concern, but your full trust in the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we want to trust you. Help us. Give us the strength. challenge us to to know you more deeply, that our trust in you may grow, that our trust in you may increase. We want to grow in our trust, Father. Help us to obey your word because we trust it. Help us to follow in your ways because we trust it. Help us to not look at the circumstances going on around us and and to be uh, uh, concerned by them, to be be, uh, brought down by them, to be uh, discouraged by them, but to be reminded that our trust is in the Lord. who says that you are uh, the Father, who says you are my child and you are in my hands and you are being provided for and uh, 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 your inheritance is the kingdom of God. Help us to grow in our trust, Father. Stir up our hearts this morning, right now, Lord, as I pray. Begin to to stir up our affections for you, to stir up our love for you, to stir up our desire to trust you, to serve you, to love you more deeply, Lord. 
recognizing that we are your children and this is only a temporary stage, only a, a, a sliver of a moment in all of eternity. Help us get that in perspective this morning in our minds and in our hearts, leading us into action, leading us into movement, leading us into response, Lord. Do that work this morning in our hearts, Father. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you leave, I want to kind of read this prayer from uh, uh, Paul over you that we read at the beginning of service. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be blessed as you go this week. Please make plans to join us uh, next Sunday for worship and then next Sunday night for uh, uh, family table at Cornerstone Ranch. And this week, if you're available, Tuesday and Thursday, stop by.